All right, so I'm back at it again, converting some more brass over to uh, 8.6 blackout. This cartridge has just been so much fun that uh, I can't seem to get enough of the brass. So, I know, even though I'm getting a ton of firings and I could probably reload it a lot of times for whatever reason, I feel this uh, urge to make a lot of brass. So, what I found is just like the Hornady 6.5 uh, Creedmoor brass, this uh, Hornady uh, 243 brass it's another brass that we don't have to worry about turning the neck on it so even though turning the necks not not too inconvenient it just kind of adds a step but I've also found that by trimming these on the little Harbor Freight saw that it uh, alleviates a lot of the trimming the final case trimming that I have to do so I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up real quick and set up the GoPro so you can kind of see. So for mine, I went into Fusion 360 and I basically made a dimension of the cartridge and then used the split tool to split away and 3D printed this little jig. So the little jig is very handy. It lets me just kind of slip these in here and uh, it is a little bit noisy, but we're gonna go ahead and cut some. So I will do a couple more and kind of, uh, you know, kind of shut off the uh, audio on that section just because it is kind of loud and annoying. But I found that if I cut them, just this little tiny bit that I cut off there, go ahead and get a comparison side by side. So just that little, little bit that I'm cutting off, it ends up working out a lot better. I don't have to worry about uh, split cases and it just seems to be a lot easier on top of not having to trim for the final length so much of the brass. Now another thing that it does is I've changed where I'm aiming my annealer. So before I was, I was focusing the annealer at just the base of the neck right there. So right on that shoulder. Now I'm moving the annealer down to where it's actually aimed more here which is basically directly on the bottom of the shoulder. So, and what that does is it ends up, the part that's being worked the most ends up being annealed. So it works out really good. So let me go ahead and chop some of these real quick before the uh, camera dies and I have to switch the battery. And we'll go from there. Now one downside to the jig that I did make is that sometimes when it trims, it'll have a little burr and kind of hang up in there. So if I were gonna remake one of these, I would probably not add this. I'll point to it on the other video so that you can I'll put it up. I'll put the other video up so you can see, but uh, I wouldn't add this ring. I would actually eliminate that ring so that I don't have to worry about it so much because the case sits just fine without it. But, uh, you know, for five cents in plastic or whatever it costs, I mean, it's not really a big deal to make another one. And sometimes that doesn't, doesn't get stuck. So let me go ahead and get the other stuff set up and we'll go on to the next step. All right, so I went ahead and got a new battery for the camera and I uh, swapped the GoPro uh, mount out. That way you can get a better view because in my short video, I didn't, it was kind of my first time doing the short and I didn't realize when it cut the video, it was gonna cut out a lot of the view. So anyways, I went ahead and off camera, got all the Winchester uh, cut down on the little Harbor Freight mini chop as well as the Hornady. And then I have it separated by head stamp so for the next part, what I like to do is chamfer and deburr to uh, clean all of that up on the case mouth before I put this into a die because it will mess the die up. So you can use one of these little guys uh, and do it by hand. It really doesn't take much. Just kind of spin it and just kind of spin it like that. And that's about good. So now it's nice and uh, 
nice and cleaned up and ready to go. So, go ahead and put that there. Looks like we're going to do the uh, Hornady or the uh, Winchester first. So, this is a it's a great tool to have, but it's it's kind of small and uh, it, it's great for a pocket tool, but not not my first choice when it comes to to doing it. Now, the guys over at uh, Burst Fire they sent me this, and this is an extremely handy little tool. So, comes like this in two pieces, and you can go ahead and and screw them in together, and you can change out the tools on them so you could actually take these off if you wanted to and switch them out with a different one but anyways this definitely makes it a lot easier so we'll go ahead and do another one real quick just real nice real easy doesn't take a lot and there we go and that's good to go so that is definitely uh, a method that you can use is the hand tools so I am a big fan of this. I definitely will use it for some of the projects where I'm just doing, you know, a couple cases. Then you have things like this, which is the uh, Hornady, uh, you know, tri head or whatever they call it. But uh, my issue with this is you can see how much run out it has there, how much wobble it has. And so it doesn't make a huge difference, but every once in a while it'll kind of tend to wobble and catch a case. Anyways, I use this for a lot of rounds, so it's probably probably just kind of been beat up and, and used more than it should have. But I'm going to set this out of the way, and we're going to turn on that GoPro. So with the uh, Burst Fire Annealer, let me go ahead and tilt you up so you can see it. Uh, with this Burst Fire Annealer, it's a 2-in-1, so it actually has that, like you saw in, the, in my short video. It has the tool heads up there, so let's go ahead and turn on the GoPro so that you can get a, a good view. And just, it doesn't take much, it doesn't take much pressure, and just like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and run through these, and then we will come back and we'll go to the next step. So. After I get that done, we're going to move on to annealing the brass and I'll show you the location that I've switched to annealing and it seems to be working better for me. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Alright, so I went ahead and got all these done. Uh, so they've all now been chamfered and deburred. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump to the annealing. And like I said, with the annealing, I'm going to show you kind of where I've switched from uh, aiming the torch. So before, I was aiming the torch kind of in the middle of the neck here and or right at the top of the shoulder. So I've switched to now aiming the tip of the torch here at this uh, bottom of the shoulder. So I'm still keeping the same distance, uh, about an inch away from the torch. But let me go ahead and get these thrown in there and we'll be right back. Alright, so real quick I realized that uh, my camera's not going to get the best view from up there, so 3D printed some parts that uh, are going to help, and this is just a simple GoPro mount. It's actually a really great design, so the guy that did it did a great job. Uses a half nut, super easy to install, has a nice little thumb nuts, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and swap this onto the camera. So you guys can get a better view, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've slowed down the uh, the annealer from 25 that I was running previously down to 20, which seems to give me a lot better results. But I have also adjusted the flame, so I am kind of running out of fuel, so it's, it's kind of up and down a little bit. But uh, for the most part, I'm going to go ahead and hit the GoPro so that I can add that up in the corner and you can get a better idea what I'm talking about on the close view and the location of the flame. So moving the flame from the neck down to the bottom of the shoulder just seems to seems to work better for me in, in what I'm doing and processing. So I'm going to go ahead and run through all of these cases and when I get done with that then we'll move on to the next step. So I will be right back. 
All right, all the cases have had time to cool. So we now have annealed brass. Let me go ahead and get that to come up. So there you go, it's annealed. And it's probably a little bit heavy because I did go a little bit slower than normal, but that's okay. It's gonna work just fine for what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that camera back just a little bit. There we go. So before I continue with this, I just wanna take a minute to, uh, to ask, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely please consider doing so. So I enjoy making these videos and uh, hopefully it, it helps somebody or gives somebody inspiration, but uh, they do take a lot of time. So for this in particular one, between changing out the propane and setting all the different tools up, I also had to go ahead and remove my priming arm, uh, my uh, primer tube, so that you guys can get a good view here of what's going on on the press. So anyways, like I said, if you're not already subscribed, please do uh, go ahead and do that because I definitely appreciate it. So and it, it helps out. We're still trying to get to our thousand subscriber goal. Now, when it comes to setting up the press, I'm gonna go ahead and do it on this Hornady because it has the quick change uh, lock and load bushings, which make this a lot easier. One thing that I can't stress enough is when it comes to the dies, definitely go ahead and hold on to the die tight and tighten down all of your zip spindles and mandrels because you're gonna need them tight. The other thing, obviously, set your dies. So I went ahead and set these all up off camera just so that it would be an easy easy process and you guys could get an idea what I'm doing pretty quickly. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, the Hornady brass. And for the Hornady brass, oh, that's the Winchester. There's the Hornady. Okay, so for me, you can use the, the lube pad and, uh, and hand roll your cases, and you can put a little bit of lube inside the necks. Uh, I don't put any in the, in the mouth, and there's a reason for it. I actually find that it, it's harder to size them, and I get little wrinkles in my brass. So what I do is I just take the Dillon case lube, or you can take uh, lanolin and just uh, spritz it. It doesn't, it doesn't take much at all, so I could probably just spray four or five times on uh, an entire batch that I'm gonna process. But uh, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and, and add a little extra to the bag because I'm just gonna do a few and kinda show you. So now, because it is an alcohol-based uh, lubricant, you definitely wanna let it air out for a minute. A lot of people have, have uh, had issues when using the uh, Dillon case lube. And I think that most of that is because they're not letting them uh, air dry. So you could also use a Hornady One Shot. I've had really good success with the uh, Hornady One Shot as well. So let me go ahead and move those three with the Dillon lube out of the way and put these here. And the same thing goes for the, the Hornady One Shot. You definitely want to give it time to dry. So just little spritz on the top, roll them, and a little spritz, just like that. And at the same time as I'm doing that, I'm actually getting some, just enough, inside of the case mouse. So now, for step one, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the full length 308 sizing die. And we're going to go ahead. Now this press, it is very picky about what kind of uh, shell holders it uses, so it likes to wobble. So I've kind of got to guide it up until it hits, just like that. Okay, make sure we're good. And it's gonna take quite a bit of pressure. So, just like that, and all the way down. Now, as you can see, I've taken, let me go ahead and get the camera to focus again. There you go, so you can see the difference it's already to 308 diameter on the case mouth, and it wasn't, didn't take too much effort to do that. So then again, I'm gonna guide it up. Good amount of pressure, and there we go. So now we have two pieces that have been done, 
Let me go ahead and turn on the GoPro. Oh. I even set up a little light so you guys can get really nice uh, clear video there on uh, on what's going on on the press. So, give me just one second. All right, there we go. Okay. So, I'm gonna go ahead and guide that up again, nice and slow, and just steady pressure all the way until it pops out the primer. So if you're using new brass, you don't have to worry about popping the primer out, but uh, you still wanna go all the way. Really, I guess all that matters is that you pass over the mandrel and, uh, and open the case mouth up. So let's go ahead and do a couple more of these real quick. And just like that. Okay, little primer, put that in the spent primer bucket. Now, what we have is, we have six cases that have all been expanded out to 308. Beautiful. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my die over. And again, really like this lock and load. Uh, it makes it so easy to change dies out. So you could go ahead and um, uh, do it on one of these. It's just going to take a little bit more time. My recommendation was uh, have a dedicated set of dies and adjust them. And then you don't want the Lee lock rings, but rather you want lock rings that you can actually lock into position. That way when you set them, they go to the same spot every time and you'll get really good consistent results. Okay, so... Now that I've done that, I am going to go ahead and just give it a little spritz again of the uh, Hornady One Shot. Just because. There we go. And kind of give those just a second to dry. So now, with this die, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be forming them into the 8.6 Blackout but they're going to be very long so they're going to need to be trimmed down here i have an example case of 8.6 so we'll compare that with the other one here in just a second so let me go ahead and stop that so i have to edit less of it out and we'll restart it okay those should be good to go now Hopefully you have less slop in your press and you don't have to guide them in, but it takes quite a bit of pressure to get these to form. There we go. And then I like to spin it 180 degrees. And there we go. So that looks pretty good. Now, I may need to adjust this. Yeah, that's definitely not an adjustment. So let me go ahead. I think that's the only one that I didn't set. So I like it to touch the shell holder and then go just about a quarter of a turn for the cam over. And let me see if I can find my lock tool. Good old Lee lock tool, which for right now is evading me. Okay. There it is. All right, so little lock tool. I actually seen a, uh, a guy that designed one that's 3D printed that looks a whole heck of a lot easier to use. But anyways, now we're gonna guide this one up and we're just gonna press it straight in all the way. And then I like to rotate it 180 degrees and press it in. So, just like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how much you have to trim off. Okay, so that's what we've got now that we're going to be working with. So let me go ahead and do the rest of these. And this is just kind of a, kind of just a way to do it on a single stage press. I prefer to do this all on my uh, Dillon. Uh, progressive press because it's a lot faster so but 
if all you're working with is a single stage press, it can definitely be done. It's just a little bit more time consuming. So. Now, so you can get an idea, once I get done, I'll go ahead and wipe them off and show you with the trim length that I'm using and turning the cases, I'm not having any split necks on my once fired brass and that's kind of a big deal. Go ahead and wipe the lube off them. Very nice. And I like to wet tumble them after I'm all done. So I know it's not necessary to wet tumble them. You could get away with just throwing them in some dry media and, and that'll probably work fine. But uh, I prefer to wet tumble them. All right, now, now we've got to deal with trimming the cases. And I'll go ahead and show doing it two different ways. Uh, I do have my uh, Hornady trimmer here, but right now I have it set up for something specific. So I'm not going to use that, but what I will show is the Frankfurt Arsenal uh, Precision uh, Universal Precision Case Trimmer. Now this thing is super easy to use. Once you get it set, it pretty much stays set and uh, I get really good results with it. Uh, some people don't like it, but I, I get amazing results. So the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and back this out and I will show you me using the uh, Lee quick trim. So, okay. Now we're going to go ahead and give this a shot with the uh, Lee trimmer and here we go. Just gonna raise this up in here like this and we're gonna go ahead and let me back that out just a hair so I'm not very happy with that okay there's that and let me just go about like that okay now there we go so you will have to play with it and get it adjusted but uh, this Lee uh, trimmer. It's super convenient. It works very well. We're going to just go ahead and insert this in here. Let me grab my safety glasses. Anytime that you're trimming or uh, depriming with uh, live cases, it's definitely advised that you wear safety glasses. Probably a good idea to wear them the entire time. But anyways, we don't want to get any, any shavings in our eyes. So with this, you don't want to force it. You just want to let it, let the cutter do the cutting and just kind of guide it. When it gets to the bottom, you'll feel it. You can kind of, it's spring loaded, so you may have to give it just a little bit of help, but for the most part, you should be good to go. Now for me, I prefer to have a long trim and then be able to dial it down from there, just because you could always trim more off, but you can't get any back. And once, once you get your trim length figured out, um, you can just lock it down and, and it'll stay right there. Okay, so one, six, eight, five. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got our trim length established on this one. Let's go ahead and let me show you the Frankfurt Arsenal trimmer and just how that one works. Okay, so here we go. I've got it chucked up in the drill. I've already made my adjustments. So we're going to go ahead and start with this piece of brass here and just insert it into the front. Now we've got a lot to trim, so it's going to take a minute. I'm actually going to pop this thing into second. All right, now one thing that I like to do with this Frankfurt Arsenal is actually insert it in again because I do find that it has a tendency to cut slightly uneven. Now that may just be me. I have used this for quite a bit of a uh, round, but there we go. Now we've got that trimmed. Let's go ahead and chamfer and deburr it. That trimmer definitely can be a lot faster. And once you get it set, it is pretty freaking accurate. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and zero this. And I'm not sure why every time I turn it off, it uh, adjusts itself. So 1685, that is what we're searching for there. And uh, it's just kind of, you know, it, it works just pretty consistently. I mean, every time. You just can't go wrong with that trimmer. So went ahead and chucked it up in there in a different position just so that you could kind of see. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. So that is kind of my method of doing it if I'm not going to use the Dillon. Now the Dillon for me works a lot better because everything comes out identical. It uh, does it all in one one pass. You could use something like the Hornady uh, AP press. That's a great press. It works really well. Let me go ahead and trim this last one while we're at it real quick. Hopefully everything comes out good on the video, but that is basically my process if I'm going to use the single stage press and uh, different types of trimmers. So you definitely don't have to have a progressive press. You can do it like this. It's just a little bit more time consuming. And uh, yeah, but regardless, I feel like I got uh, really nice brass. I got great results. So pretty excited about uh, running this. All right. Again, Definitely. I know it's like uh, beating a dead horse, but uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing it. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time to make these videos, and uh, I appreciate all the subscribers that I do have. So, And if you want to see new videos in the future of different stuff, possibly different conversions, let me know in the comments section. Or if you'd rather see the shooting videos, uh, let me know in the comments section. But for now, we've got ourselves some... 8.6 blackout brass and let me go ahead and grab the other bag so I can show you what it'll look like when it's done. All right, so there is a bag of the brass when it's done and in the bag it doesn't really do it justice but let me go ahead and pull it out so you can get a better idea of just how nice this brass turns out. And some of these have been neck turned, some of them haven't. So I guess that's one step that we could do real quick is I could show you what I have to do when it comes to neck turning them because that's going to be the next step if you're not using uh, Hornady brass is going to be neck turning them. So let me go ahead and set up for that and I'll be right back. All right, so when I'm setting this in here, I want this to have the least amount of wobble as possible. So I like to put this on while I hold pressure and then tighten down the uh, lock nut. And let me go ahead and borrow this drill. Set that cutter up out of the way. And I'm just gonna chuck this up here. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and let me straighten you out there. Okay, just like that. Now we're not removing much material at all. Let me go ahead and set that out of the way and bring you back over here for a second. So you can see there, we're just barely removing a little bit here. Now I was staying a little bit farther away from the shoulder, but I found that I had the best brass after I got just barely into it there. Now, we are searching for a overall thickness of about 12 to 13 thousandths. So let me grab this here. Now with Hornady, it's pretty much already there. So you don't have to do that. Let me switch it back over. Okay. 13 thou. So that's kind of perfect. That's right where I want it to be. And even the Hornady brass, let me go ahead and grab that again. Okay. 
So, it's just, the Hornady brass just works out perfectly um, because you don't have to turn the necks on it. Now, something that you can do if you are gonna, if you are gonna turn the necks, uh, the neck turning tool that I use here is not your only option. You can use uh, different ones. There's plenty of them available, plenty of them out there. This one from Hornady is really convenient because it allows me to make a one-click adjustment. You know, but uh, yeah, like I said, so now we've got some more pieces of brass that we need to get loaded up and ready to go, and we can do some more shooting. So that's uh, that's definitely my favorite part. But uh, if you uh, watch the video all the way to the end, I appreciate it. Thank you. And definitely let me know in the comment section, do you want to see anything else? So, uh, YouTube's policy basically prevents us from uh, actually loading ammo nowadays, even though there's plenty of uh, other videos out there of loading ammo. They uh, have frowned upon that now, so I won't ever be able to show the procedure for, for man, you know, they call it manufacturing ammo. I won't be able to show the loading part of it, but what I can show you is how to make the brass, which I've had really good luck with 243, and I've had really good luck with 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, you know, even if the brass that I make, even if I have to turn the necks on it, it's really not the end of the world. It, it takes just a few more seconds, and if I can come across range brass that's, you know, basically free, uh, why not, uh, you know, save a dollar per case because the Hornady brass does get expensive. Normally you're able to find like the 2000 count packs and it's less than 50 cents, uh, a piece of brass. And some places have like 250 count pieces of brass for like 150 bucks. Even then it's, it's not too bad, but lately all I've seen is the 50 count boxes like, uh, like these. So with these 50 count boxes, you're basically running, you know, $40 plus shipping or $50 plus shipping and you're paying a premium for the brass. So nothing wrong with Hornady brass. I definitely, I, I like it a lot. Um, a 50 pack would be great for experimenting or if it's all you can find. But if you have range brass, 243 win, you can convert it, at least in my experience, you know, always do your own due diligence, be cautious. Uh, you know, practice safely. What I'll do with the 243 is I'll run a reduced load the first shot, and then from there I'll kind of work up. So I've had quite a bit of time now to experiment with it. I've done some experiments with uh, 4227. I've done some testing with uh, CFE Black. I've done testing with uh, with the 1680, which I did a video on uh in the i'll uh i'll link it at the end of the results on the chrono but uh now i've been playing with uh hard cast lead and subsonic loads and so it's definitely a lot cheaper to shoot anyways thanks for watching i appreciate it and let me know what you think in the comment section till next time